Hi girlies, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing some makeup and I also want to talk through some of the things that I've learned while being in therapy. If you watched a couple videos on my channel, you'll see that I therapy is a running thing. For my makeup today, I'm definitely a dewy, light makeup type of girl. I think I'm going to try a new foundation today. So let's go ahead and get into this video. I'm going to start with my brows today. I like to use this Got To Be Glue um, Styling Gel. For my brows, I've only been using this for about a week, but I honestly really love the way my brows turn out. Let's talk through three of the things that I've learned while being in therapy. Number one, self-compassion. Becoming a mom for the first time and being a beginner of basically everything that it means to raise a human has definitely shifted my perspective on the things that I have always felt like I should know. What I now know is everything is to be learned and just because I don't know something doesn't make me deficient, doesn't mean that you know I'm stupid, it just means that it's something that I haven't learned yet. For my primer, I'm gonna use this Milk Grip Set and Refresh Spray. For my concealer, I'm going to use the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. A guiding principle that has really helped me in my self-compassionate journey is that I am here to grow. And honestly, that's really helped me keep the perspective that everyone is on their own unique journey of self-discovery and this can look many different ways. Being self-compassionate has helped me spot opportunities where I can grow. So instead of like beating myself up and feeling like, oh my gosh, you should know this, or you could have done this better, I can really just be a lot more gentle with myself. There are a few resources out there around self-compassion. Kristen Neff is an author of a book called, I think it's called Self-Compassion, but there's a lot of material out there. I've gone to her website, and she also has like this self-compassion test that you can take. It's free, anybody can take it, and it kind of just tells you like how compassionate you are. It gives you like a readout on ways that you can also improve in the self-compassionate area. All right, I'm a little nervous about this because I don't do foundation often, but there is this foundation by the brand Bosma that I picked up a while ago and I still haven't tried it. So since I'm at home today, we're gonna try out a new foundation. It's Bosma in the color 014, and I tried it out on my skin. It looks like it matches pretty well, so girl, we're just gonna pray for the best, okay? Number two, we're gonna talk about boundaries. I'm not even gonna hold y'all. My whole perspective around boundaries changed when I realized that boundaries actually keep people in relationship with me. It's not something to necessarily keep people out. And once I started to learn more about that, it really helped me hold the perspective that Boundaries help me maintain a healthy relationship with people that I love, people in my life, people who I have to work around. They help keep me at a healthy state. For me, when it comes to having boundaries and holding boundaries, this can look like saying no and saying no and not being worried about what the other's response is going to be, how the other person feels. One thing that I know for sure is that I cannot predict somebody else's feelings. I'm not able to manage somebody else's feelings and emotions. So when I make decisions about myself, yes, I am considerate of how someone else may feel, but at the same time, I'm conscious of how much weight I'm putting onto that. That has really helped me set and hold boundaries based on whatever my values are. Last year gave me so much practice on what it means to have boundaries and communicate boundaries. Truth be told, I am definitely still practicing. I think this is going to be a lifelong journey. Last year I was at work and one of my coworkers asked me if I wanted to help facilitate a meeting. That said meeting was the same day and maybe like roughly four hours. And honestly y'all, I was not in the headspace to honestly host a meeting, especially with it being so spur of the moment. I've certainly had anxiety leading up to meetings. Obviously when you facilitate a meeting, it takes preparation and it was just not something that I wanted to put my energy into. I knew how much mental energy it was gonna take 
when you drain yourself mentally, it also shows up physically. So I just, it's not something that I wanted to take on. And I had consciously chosen not to facilitate any meetings. It was one of those things where like, anybody who wanted to volunteer to facilitate, they could. And I was just like, I know that I don't want to do this. So she sent me an I am and she asked me if I wanted to help co-facilitate the meeting with her. And my response was no. Um, I told her why, and I did it in a very professional way, a very kind way. And at the end of the day, I don't know how she felt about my response, but she never replied. She never replied to my message, and honestly, when I sent it, I knew that I was saying no to something, but I honestly am not in a space where I'm able to manage how anybody else feels. So I honestly was just like, okay. That's cool. Reality is I get to choose whatever decision I make and my decision was no. And I decided to stand firm in that. So honestly, that's just one of many examples where I'm learning to set and hold boundaries. Another example of that is me as a mom, like when it comes to some of the boundaries that I have um, with my daughter, for example, sometimes that will look like Myla is a toddler. So sometimes she may like pick up something and she may throw it. Like for example, she may pick up her cup and she'll drink her water out of it, but then maybe a few minutes later, she'll start throwing it. And I'll say, Myla baby, no, we don't throw cups. Like, you know, basically don't throw the cup. And she'll look at me and she'll keep throwing it and I'll pick it up and she'll keep throwing it and I know that she doesn't want any water. And so in those moments, my boundary is, okay, if you continue to throw the cup, I'm going to take the cup away from you and then you won't have a cup to throw. You won't have the cup. And those are moments where I get to practice not only setting boundaries, but also holding boundaries. In those instances, it doesn't require the other person to do anything. It just requires action on my end to stand and hold firm with my own boundaries. Okay, I think we got this blended in really well. It looks really good. I almost can't even tell I have foundation on, which is fine by me because I am definitely a light makeup type of girl. For my blush, I'm gonna stay true to a blush that I have been loving. It is the Skin Glass Cream Blush and I have been loving this in the shade Spicy. Third thing that I've learned is that my freedom is gonna take time, curiosity, and effort. I have really come to understand that life is a series of learning, unlearning, and relearning, both happening simultaneously at the same time. It requires a lot of time and honestly curiosity about why I navigate the world the way I do. When we're young, we don't really get as much say in, you know, some of our circumstances and how we choose to navigate the world always. We don't always have the wisdom. We don't always have the flexibility that we tend to get when we become an adult. So now that I'm older, I really take a lot of time to think about why am I making some of the decisions I make? Why do I have some of the habits I have? Um, what is prompting me to make certain decisions? Are these things that I'm just doing purely out of habit or are these things that I'm doing because I am actively consciously choosing them. For a very long time, I had this idea that like, if I go to therapy, all I have to do is fix myself. And once I fix myself, I'll be just fine. But the reality is that is not the way of life. We're always gonna be changing, evolving, learning and growing. There's always truly gonna be something for us to learn. And I'm also not broken to be fixed. Like the idea that I am broken and I need to be fixed in order to make whole is not the perspective that I adopt. I adopt the perspective that I am whole. There is nothing to be fixed. I am just learning and growing and evolving every single day into the woman that I am into the woman that I am. With that being said, there are a lot of habits, behaviors, thoughts that I have had to really take a deep dive into and learn more about so that I can understand and figure out what I really want to believe and how I want to live and navigate this life. Now that I'm older, I understand that y'all, I get to choose, we all get to choose. We get to choose what we hold on to, what we believe, we get to choose what our life looks like. Um, obviously for me, like with the co-creation of with God, but God has also given us 
Um, God has also given us free will on this earth to make decisions and to make choices. And so I just want to learn about myself so that I can make the most informed decisions for me. I'm also going to use some bronzer today. So I'm going to be using this Refi Cream Bronzer in the color tan. Becoming curious about myself has really helped me stay open to new ways of living, new ways of being new ways that I just want to like set up my life and honestly it's so fun because I realize that like whatever structures I was born into I don't have to live by those same structures as an adult so that has been really fun for me it's really allowed me to enjoy my creativity which, which has been honestly one of the highlights of my year so far because my intention this year is to truly just enjoy being creative enjoy being free and enjoy just having the freedom of choice spraying some more primer because again we love a dewy look for my mascara i'm using the milk makeup kush waterproof mascara and this is just like a black mascara these days i am doing a lot of self-reflection just to understand my patterns and triggers and things that can ultimately help me evolve into the best version of myself that I can be. For my lips, I'm going to use this NYX lip pencil in the color Peekaboo Neutral. For my lip gloss, I'm using the Dior Lip Glow Oil in the color Cherry. Alright, so this is today's makeup look. I love it. It came out really nice, really simple, really dewy, just like I like it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as I talk through some of the things that I learned in therapy. If you're in therapy, drop some things that you've learned as well, girl. I want to know, like, what have you been thinking about lately as it relates to your personal development and your self-growth? How has your journey been with therapy? Are you in therapy? I just want to know what's up. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!